Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Barton here. Today we're going to be learning about decimals. We're going to use what we know about fractions to help us. So let's look at the ones place. We knew that one is equal to one over one. One whole, as you would say. We normally don't write a fraction to represent one. And we know if we were going to go from the ones place to the tens place, we would multiply by 10. So we'd have 1 times 10. Because if we have 10, then we cannot fit 10 in the ones place. We have to carry it over to the tens place and say that we have 1 10. Or if we were going to write that as a fraction, we have 10 over 1. 10 wholes. Now in the tens place, we can hold up to 9 tens. Or if we included the ones, 99 wholes. Once we go past that 99, we're going to have to move to the hundreds place. And we know the same is true if we were going from the tens place to the hundreds place, that you would need to multiply 10 by 10 to move up to that hundreds place. Every time we move up one place in the place value chart, we're increasing by times 10. We would write that hundreds as 100 over 1, meaning 100 holes. And that would extend all the way up to 999 holes. With 9 hundreds, 9 tens, and 9 ones. Once we add one more hole to that, we have to move to the thousands place. Because each place can only hold one digit. And we know going from the hundreds to the thousands is going to be the same. You're going to have to have 100 times 10 to equal thousands. Same thing as if you had 200. To get to 2,000, 200 times 10. Now in the thousands place, we're going to represent that thousand as a fraction, as 1,000 over 1, extending all the way up to 9,999 holes. Again, if we add one more, we're going to have to move into the 10 thousands place because we cannot hold any more ones in the thousands place. Again, if we move from thousands to ten thousands, we're going to have to multiply one thousand times ten. Same thing as if it was five thousand going into the ten thousands, we'd have to have five thousand times ten to make fifty thousand. Each jump in the place value chart is ten times greater than the last place we were in. So if we're in the ten thousands, we're going to represent that as a fraction as ten thousand over one, or ten thousand holes. That's going to extend, in this place, up to 99,999, a 9 in each of the places after the 10,000s place. Once we add one more 1, each place is going to have to round up to the 100,000s place. And again, going from the 10,000s to the 100,000s place, nothing has changed. It's going to be 10,000 times, yes, you guessed it, 10. Just like every other place, the next place in the place value chart is 10 times greater. Now, as we get to the 100,000s place, it's going to be the exact same way. We're going to represent it as a fraction over 1. That 1 representing wholes, because 1 is the basis of all whole numbers. Every whole number is made with 1s. So we have 100,000 over 1 all the way up into 999,999. Again, a 9 value in a place is the highest value you can have in one single place. So once you get one more, then it has to go to the next place because 10 is actually two digits. It's a larger value. To the get to the millions place, yes, we have to have 100,000 times 10. Same as if it was 800,000, changing it to 8 millions, 800,000 times 10. If you have 1 million represented as a fraction, it's going to be 1 million over 1 because it's representing 1 million holes. This in this place would extend all the way to 9,999,999 holes. The same thing would continue through the place value chart if we were going to extend. We'd go into the 10 millions, the 100 millions, the billions, the 10 millions, the 100 billions, all the way continuing the exact same pattern up into infinity, which never ends. 
each time you're increasing a place value, you're increasing by 10. Every time you take one jump to the next higher place in a place value chart, always 10 times greater. Now let's look at the decimals. These are on the other side of the ones. Normally we wouldn't see that. Normally we would just see the ones and then it ends. However, we can add a decimal point and some fractional values. This means that we're now dealing with parts of a whole, parts of one, as long as it's any whole broken up into parts. The place values we're gonna worry about are tenths and hundredths. First, let's look at the tenths place. Same thing, if we're moving one place in the place value, we have to think, hmm, we know it's going to be times 10, so what times 10 is going to equal one whole? Well, we know it has to also be a fractional part. So if I was going to make this a fraction, I would have one tenth. That's where the tenths come from. That THS represents it's out of 10 total. So it's a fraction broken up into 10 parts. We can represent this as 10 times 1 tenth, represented as a decimal here instead of the fraction. We know that we have a decimal point there. If we're going to multiply it by 10, then it's going to move the decimal point one place to the right to get us that one whole. Just as we know 10 tenths is equal to one whole. So if we have one-tenth, we're going to go all the way up to nine-tenths, because once we get ten, our whole is complete, and that would have to move to the ones place, giving us that ten-tenths, or as we know, one whole. Both of those are equal to one another. It has to be tenths, though, to be represented as a decimal as the place right after the decimal point, because our numbers are based on ten, not any other value. So let's look at representing that range of decimals in the tenths place as decimals. We have the zero to represent zero holes, a decimal point, and then the one to represent one tenth. That would extend to zero and a decimal point and nine tenths. You read it just as you would as a fraction. If I wrote it in decimal form for ones, I would have one decimal point zero to represent ten tenths. That THS on the end is very important. Now let's look if we are going to make more than one jump on the place value chart, increasing by two places rather than one, we'd have to multiply by 100 because we have two jumps, each jump representing times 10. So if we took two place values increasing, then we'd have 10 times 10, which we know is 100. So let's keep that in mind when we're looking at the next place in our decimal value places. We have the hundreds. We know that the hundreds is two places away from the ones. So if we think the exact same way as we did with the tens, we have to think what times 100 would equal one whole? Well, that's where we're going to get one over 100 to represent one hundredth. That THS again on the end of that place value name, hundredths. We have to use the exact same values as we have in our holes because those are all based on 10. We know that hundreds then would be 10 times less than tenths, just as tens are 10 times less than hundreds, representing that one whole as 100 over hundredths to represent the jumps that have taken place and the place value chart. So our range within the hundreds is going to start with a one hundredth, and it's going to extend to 99 hundredths. However, 99 hundredths is not only in one place value. We have two digits here, so they span across the tenths and the hundredths. 9D from 99 would be represented with 9 tenths. So we have 9 tenths and 9 hundredths here that represent 99 hundredths. As we've seen with fractions, we know that tenths and hundredths can be converted back and forth with equivalent fractions. We know that nine tenths would be equivalent to 90 hundredths. 
So if we wrote this as 90 hundredths plus 9 hundredths decomposing the two parts, and then replace the 90 hundredths with 9 tenths as they are equivalent fraction, and use it as it would represent the decimal place, tenths and hundredths for this value. Now let's look at writing decimals instead of the fractional equivalents. So if I had a zero in the ones place and a zero in the tens place and one in the hundredths place, this would be equivalent to one hundred. One over one hundred. This just means one out of one hundred. One hundred hundredths would equal one. So it's like a penny in comparison to a dollar. So let's look at the tenths. If a hundredth is a penny, then tenths is like a dime. We would represent that as, as one over ten equaling the same as 10 over 100. They're equivalent fractions representing the same amount, 1 tenth or 10 hundredths, just the same as if you said, I have one dime. Well, one dime is worth 10 cents, 10 out of one whole dollar. In decimal form, you'd write that as 0 decimal 1 and a 0 after to represent 10 hundredths or just 0 decimal 1 to represent 1 tenth. Now let's look at other examples of decimals. If I had zero wholes or zero ones and zero tenths, but I had six in the hundredths place, that would represent six hundredths. You would say it exactly like you would the fraction, six hundredths, representing six out of 100 total. Now what if I had a value in the ones place? Well, that's not going to change anything with the decimals. It's just gonna add more value to your total number. So if I still had that six in the hundreds, but a two in the ones place, that would represent two wholes, or two ones, and six hundredths. You would say that and to represent the decimal. That is why we don't normally say and in any other whole numbers, because it represents the change in whole numbers and fractional values. Now if I was going to add a value of the tens and any other numbers in front of that, that's only going to change my whole number giving us 12 holes and 6 hundredths. Nothing changed with the decimals. Every time that you're in the ones place that we've normally worked with, it's all over one, meaning it's a whole, one representing one whole. Everything on the other side of the decimal represents out of tenths or hundreds, or if we continued on thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, it's all less than one. It's a whole broken up into fractional pieces. That's why it has that THS on the end to represent that it's out of that many. So let's look at a bigger value. If I have 324 holes, three hundredths, two tenths, four ones, zero tenths, and eight hundredths, this number is 324 and eight hundredths to represent the fractional parts and the whole number combined together think of this as money. If I put a dollar sign in front of this, this will look just like normal money. Money always has two decimal points afterwards because it represents tenths and hundredths, dimes and pennies. We don't have any place for nickels. That is not necessarily the place values. We just know that 100 pennies equals one whole and 10 dimes equals one whole as well, representing that hundredths place and the tenths place. Just as we do when we write our fractional pieces and decimals are values. If we had 24 cents, that would be zero holes and 24 hundredths. 24 hundredths, 24 out of 100 pennies that equal one dollar. You could write this decomposed as two tenths and four hundredths because that two is really in the tenths place. That's where we get that 20 hundredths. Making this two tenths plus four hundredths still representing 24 hundredths because Two tenths is equivalent to twenty hundredths. Let's look at another example here. If I had three ones, six tenths, and three hundredths, this number would be three and sixty-three hundredths because I have a three in the ones place, a six in the tenths place, a three in the hundredths place. I could decompose this into each of those values representing each place that is shown in our place value chart. I have three holes and I have six tenths representing that sixty hundredths in our mixed number there. And then I have the three hundredths representing the last place represented in our place value chart. So I have three and sixty three hundredths total. 
just decomposed into each of its values. Let's look at a larger number. If I had two in the thousands place, one in the hundreds place, four in the tens, six in the ones, three in the tenths, and nine in the hundreds, representing each of those values. Make close attention that the hundreds and the hundredths are not the same place, nor are the tens or the tenths. Tenths represent out of ten, hundredths represent out of, out of one hundred. So if I was going to write this, I'd still have a comma to represent that thousands unit. So I have 2,146 and 39 hundredths. That's how it would look if I was writing it as a mixed number. I could decompose this into 2,000 plus 100 plus 40 plus 6 plus 3 tenths plus 9 hundredths, representing each of those digits' values because of where they are in the place value chart. Remember, those decimals represent fractional parts. Tenths, meaning out of 10, to make a whole, and hundredths, meaning out of 100, to make a whole. They are behind the decimal point to represent that they're out of one whole. All the numbers in front of the decimal point represent whole numbers meaning they're all over 1. Normally we don't write them as fractional parts because they're not fractional parts. They're all wholes. This would continue on in the same exact order on the other side of the decimal. We would have thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, each of those representing parts out of that many. However, we're only concerned with the tens and the hundreds. Let's look at one last thing before I leave you. If I was going to write one whole with the decimal representations, I would have two zeros after the, de after the decimal to represent that I have one whole and no fractional pieces, representing one hundred hundredths or ten tenths or, as we would normally say, one whole. If I were to decompose our fractional one hundred hundredths or one whole or our um, one whole with the decimals. The reason we don't normally have those parts is because we have zero tenths and zero hundredths. If you have zero of anything, you have nothing, so there's no reason to represent it with a value. That's why we normally leave off the decimal values, unless we're dealing with money to show that we don't have any extra cents represented by the hundredths or the tenths, the pennies and the dimes. We just have one whole.